Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Greetings and welcome to another presentation of the Biblical Perspective Bible Study. I'm happy that joining me again for our study is my lovely wife, Minister Gwendolyn Holmes. And as always, Minister Gwen, I'm thrilled to have you teaching with me tonight. Well, thank you for having me, Pastor. Oh, thank you for being here. Uh, in our previous uh, uh, teachings on our topic, Understanding the Spirit World, we began a discussion on the activity in the spirit realm or the spiritual world. Our last study was the first of a three-part teaching series, a mini-series called Activity of God, of Satan, and of Angels. We looked last time at the activity of God, yes. who is almighty, omniscient, omnipotent, holy, loving, and compassionate. And we saw that he is the creator, sustainer of the universe that's still forgiving and blessing and saving people. Yes. That was last time. All right. We saw that he's very active still in the world today. Yes. Our lesson included, but was not limited last time, to the fact that God is judging the world and retarding sin. He is rescuing and blessing believers. He is saving repentant center, sinners. And he is showing love and compassion on an ongoing basis to all of mankind. Yes. Minister, mm -hmm. give us a preview of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Okay, in our discussion this time, we will be taking an in-depth look at the activity of Satan. Satan or the devil, another name for Satan, actually Satan is a name for the devil, Okay, is the antithesis, antithesis or opposite of our holy God. Yes. Our objective in this discussion is to gain an understanding yes. of Satan's methods yes. or schemes yes. or devices. Mm -hmm. And we are going to begin by looking at scripture, looking at 1 Peter 5, 8, and then we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 2, 11b. Amen. It says, be sober spirit, be of sober spirit, be on the alert, your adversary. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Wow. 2 Corinthians 2, 11b says, For we are not ignorant mm. of his schemes. Okay. The result should be that we learn to avoid his traps and resist his temptations. Amen. Well, our very first point is about his temptations. Okay. It's good Excellent. that the Bible tells us yes. how to avoid them. Yes. It says we're not ignorant of his devices. That means if we study the word. If we study, we're not ignorant. We are not ignorant of his schemes. Yes. All right. It tells us he prowls around like a lion, you read. Yes. Seeking whom he may devour. You won't see him coming. A lion doesn't roar until he's conquered the prey. Exactly. So we need to be aware that he's a stealth enemy, mm -hmm. and we must have spiritual discernment in order to see him coming and avoid the traps. Yes. Very good, Minister. The activity of Satan, first of all, is that he tempts those who are righteous mm -hmm. to commit sin. Yes. We're going to first look at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Okay. Great. And the temptation there. Mm -hmm. to sin. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 4 and Jesus mm. and the temptation there that Satan tried to use to get Christ to sin. Yes. 
Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Listen to the tempter, Satan, at work. Wow. Now the serpent, Satan in the form of a snake, was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Eve, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat of any tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. The woman said to the serpent, from the tree, from the fruit of the trees in the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. For God knows in the day that you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and she gave also to her husband and he ate. So we see as soon as God created man, the tempter came and tempted them to sin which led the world into sin, brought in a sin nature that the world is still dealing with. So Satan is a very successful tempter. He tempted holy people without sin mm -hmm. and caused them to sin. Right. Now, Satan didn't stop. That's the first man, Adam. Mm -hmm. Jesus came to undo what Adam did by sinning, by conquering sin in the flesh. And before he can even get started really good with his ministry, Satan approaches him and tries to thwart the mission of salvation. Wow. Watch yeah. this. Matthew chapter 1. Chapter 4. Chapter 4, rather. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Look at it with me. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter, that's Satan, came to him. If you are the son of God, command these stones be made bread. Now he knew who Jesus was, if you are. Mm -hmm. That's the temptation. But he answered him, Jesus answered him and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord thy God and him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and began to minister to him. Mm -hmm. Satan has some gall. Mm -hmm. He knew who Jesus was. Exactly. He was in the throne before he got kicked out around the throne mm -hmm. with the Holy Trinity of which Jesus was one. Yes. But he still came down and thought, Maybe I can entrap him now that he has taken on human flesh, mm -hmm. human feelings, and human needs like hunger. Mm -hmm. So he caught Jesus in a hungry state and tried to tempt him with food. He tried to tempt him and use his power and gain some glory. You are the son of God. What are you doing out of your hungry? He tried to say, let me give you glory. I give you all the glory of the world. You had glory in heaven. Let me give you my glory. I own the earth. Now look, Satan couldn't offer him the kingdoms of the world if he didn't own them, proving Satan is the God of this world. Mm -hmm. He rules these kingdoms on the world, and he could have given them the Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, 
I won't serve you, I only serve God. So much here that time won't allow us to teach. But again, Satan tried to tempt him. And one thing I will know, when Satan is tempting Christ, Christ didn't argue with him with philosophy and psychology. He only quoted scripture to the devil. We need to know what the word of God says and defend ourselves against Satan and his attacks with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Satan tried to make you feel God won't protect you. You need to say, Satan, God has said, I will never leave you, leave you nor mm -hmm. forsake you. Mm -hmm. I know God is with me, although he hasn't delivered me yet. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn how, like Christ did, as our example, to use the word to stop the temptation of Satan. Mm -hmm. That's the first point. He tempts the righteous to commit sin. It worked on Adam and Eve. It did not work on Jesus. Right. And, you know, I would like to add that uh, Satan is wise with his schemes. It, yes. it said he was more crafty yes. than any other beast of the field at that time when he yes. was the beast yes. of the field. Yes. I have come to know that he only uses what we either have interest in mm. or potentially mm. have interest in. Mm. And Jesus is saying he is uh, testing, there's a test going on yes. when he's tempting him. Yes. And he's saying you shouldn't test the Lord your God. That's mm. what the word of God says. Mm. So Jesus is able to look beyond the scheme to see the motive mm. you see involved. And Satan was hoping that Jesus is hunger. Yes. Or Jesus would be anxious to come into his kingdom. Yes. A, to a reality, if you are a king, then you should have a kingdom with subjects in it. Yes. And you should have land. Right. And so how are you going to have a kingdom? He knew that he didn't have a kingdom right then right. in the wilderness. Right. So w that's one of his schemes. Good. That's one of the ways that he tempts us by our own interests. Yes. And sometimes he's testing to see what your interest is. You know, there's something very interesting here that Jesus said to him in verse 7 yes. of Matthew chapter 4. Jesus okay. said to him, on the other hand, it's also written, it's written, mm -hmm. you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. To the test. Say, don't you know who I am? Mm -hmm. You know me. Mm -hmm. You know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. I just put on flesh. Mm -hmm. you, you were created mm -hmm. in heaven by God the Father. Mm -hmm. And you know I'm God. Mm -hmm. Why are you bringing me this? You're not supposed to be testing me. Mm -hmm. he tell, he's telling Satan, I'm God. Mm -hmm. That's right there in the middle of the temptation. He didn't forget who he was. And sometimes we forget who we are when we're tempted and hungry. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, minister. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. All right. So um, we'll move on to the next point, Pastor. Yes. Uh, Satan perverts mm. or twists yes. and misinterprets the word of God. Wow. Listen to the conversation, a part of the conversation, if you were paying attention in the garden. I'm yes. going to read Genesis 3, 1 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field, yes. which the Lord God had made. Yes. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, mm. You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. So... Sometimes it's just best not to even get into a conversation with Satan <laughs> because he can add words, he can omit words, yes. and, you know, as the conversation goes on, your mind kind of forgets, well, which one did he say? Right. And she herself didn't even quote it right, didn't quote <laughs> no, God right. No, she didn't. So he brings confusion. The Bible says That's he's good. the author. Author of confusion. Of confusion. Yes. And once you are confused, sometimes we don't even go research to solve our own confusion. <laughs> you see. Excellent. Matthew 4, 6, uh -huh. it says in the conversation with Jesus, and he said to him, meaning he's speaking to Jesus, yes. if you are the son of God, yes. throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Yes. Uh, now, interesting that this was not even talking really about Jesus. The right. evidence there in, back in the Psalms right. is, is not really strong that this was no. even about it Jesus. No. But rather than debate the scripture, uh -huh. 
that Satan was quoting yeah. or misquoting. Misquoting, he misquoted. Misquoting, Jesus didn't even deal with that. He looked below and beyond the surface. And that's what we have to do. That's why we read the word of God and we get in touch with the spiritual realm to see what's behind what's being presented. Right. Jesus knew Satan was misquoting that scripture, applying yes. it to Christ. That's a quote of Psalms 91 verses 10 and 11. Yes. And it's a general statement about any believer. There's yes. no evidence that the writer was attributing this to be true of Jesus, no more than is true of anybody else that God has in his care. Yes. That Psalms applies to you and I. Satan misquoted it, misinterpreted it, and said, that was talking about you. Jump off. The, that scripture says angels will catch you. Like you said, Jesus didn't even dignify the misinterpretation. Yes, he didn't he deal just with went that. on and quoted other scripture. That's Excellent right. Excellent point. In other words, don't get in an argument with the devil. Don't get in an argument, especially based on confusion. Very good, Minister. All right. All right. The next thing we want to tell you that Satan does is he opposes the work of God in the world. Mm -hmm. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. Joshua's trying to do the right thing. Yes. And the devil is right there uh, trying to hinder him. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, that's Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. I, I read the wrong one. Verse 1. Yeah. Uh, 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 he tries to oppose mm -hmm. Zechariah chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 1. Mm -hmm. Satan is standing right there mm -hmm. to oppose Joshua as he tries to lead God's people. Yes. So yes. He, he's always around. He always, and he, his job is to hinder if he can. Well, that's the next point, Minister. Oh, okay, yeah. Our fourth okay, point Pastor. is that Satan hinders the servants of God yes. in their calling and in their serving God. Wow. Paul says on one occasion to the church, for we wanted to come to you, right into the Thessalon mm -hmm. Thessalonians, Thessalonian mm -hmm. church, for we wanted to come to you, mm -hmm. I, Paul, more than once, mm -hmm. and yet Satan hindered us. Yes. So he hinders God's people in doing the work, and we have to make sure Satan is not hindering us. Mm -hmm. And like you said, he has tricks and schemes. Yes. Beware of his tricks not to hinder your ministry, mm -hmm. not to hinder your spirituality, yes. Yes. not to hinder your study time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not to cooperate with him. Right, right. To recognize when he's trying to hinder us and just not to cooperate, which could be hard sometimes. That's right. Minister, would you take the next point? Yes, Satan hinders the gospel of Christ in order to thwart the plan of salvation. Wow. And we have a couple of scriptures we're going to look at to see this. Matthew 13, 19, and then we're going to look at verse 38 through 39. Right. And then 2 Corinthians 4, 4. This is about hindering the gospel yes. of Christ to yes. prevent the plan of salvation. Yes. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. Wow. In uh, the same chapter 13, verse 38 and 39 says, And the field is the world, and as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, mm. and the tares are the sons of the evil one. Okay. And the enemy who saved them is the, excuse me, who sowed them mm -hmm. is the devil. Right. And the harvest is the end of the age, mm -hmm. and the reapers are angels. Mm. So this is interpreting the parable of the sowers. Yes. And, and there, it, it's very in-depth, but this is an interpretation of who's doing what there. Okay, and we see Satan at work. Yes. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they may not see, might not see the light yes. of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And Pastor, you're always one that teaches us that when people say they don't see it, they mm -hmm. can't see it, they can't understand the salvation that, mm -hmm. uh, the, that you're talking about, or that the Bible is talking about, you're saying 
I believe them. They're telling you the truth because the God of this world has blinded their mind. Yes. So that they cannot see and believe. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right. That, uh, that, and, and it's so interesting in Matthew 13, 19. Yes. Satan snatches away what has been sown. Snatches away. Yes. Wow. You know, I had a believer quickly wow. that just two days ago, two, three days ago, said to me, you know, when I was a new Christian, a baby Christian, uh, the word of God was so hard to understand. I would read the King James Bible and I didn't know what it was talking about with the these and the thous and the 1611 <laughs> English that it was yes, written in. Yes, yes. And, and some of it is, it's very difficult to understand when that was not the culture that you were born in. Amen. You know, and that was not even the country you were familiar with. Yes. Okay. But, and the, the point this person was making is I was so happy when I discovered the NIV Bible with study notes. <laughs> so Satan couldn't blind anymore. Right. Couldn't right. hinder the word of God anymore. And this person now can grow, could grow in their salvation. Fantastic. That's a great story. Another thing, in addition to hindering the gospel, is that Satan ensnares the unsaved. He catches yes. them in a trap and won't let them go. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, so uh, in Acts chapter number uh, 26, verse 18, speaking of uh, those who need to be saved, uh, the apostles are praying. He, they say, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from pow the power of God to Satan. That's what they are trying to do with the gospel. Yes. So that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. That's what God wanted them to do. Yes. To turn people from darkness to light, to get them out of the snare of Satan. Yes. Uh, they can't see. It was read early in 2 Corinthians 4.4. They are caught by the devil in his net, and we need to share the gospel with him and show the world how to be free. Absolutely. That's why we're exposing Satan and his tactics and his schemes here tonight. Yes. Another thing I want to share with you is that he deceives the nations. Yes. Satan is a deceiver, wow. yes. and he has folk that will help him deceive the sinner and the saints. Yes. So we need to beware. In our, what we're going to read here in 2 Kings 6 and 7, we are false prophets but the wise king knows you need to have a prophet of God. So we need to be careful of what preacher and what prophets we're listening to and make sure they're biblical. First Kings chapter 22, verses six and seven. It said, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together. These are God's people, but there are other prophets there, about four, 400 men and said to them, shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I refrain? They said unto him, Go up. The Lord has given mm. it to, the Lord will give it into the hands of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not yet a prophet of the Lord hmm. here that we may acquire of him? I don't know who you guys are, but you're not God's prophet. <laughs> and so I'm not listening to you. So we need to be very careful. And you know, uh, Minister, we don't knock any ministry. I remember years ago, I was in a conference with Dr. Fred Price. He came to speak to a group of preachers. I was in the church. We invited him. And he said, if a man is naming Jesus, pray for him. Mm -hmm. Don't talk, but if, if we, knock him if he's teaching Buddha, or Zarasta, or Hare Krishna, or uh, 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 any of those others. But if he's preaching Jesus, he's doing some good. Pray for him. Mm -hmm. So we're not here to, to say anything bad about ministries and ministers, but you've got to be careful who you listen to. You do. Everybody is not teaching the word of God right. Mm -hmm. Some people are teaching you can name and claim and have anything you want without living right. That's not biblical. Mm -hmm. Other people won't teach on sin at all and make mm -hmm. you feel all you got to do is get a positive confession and you can get all this stuff that I have. Come on down and give your money and watch God bless you. That's not right either. God requires no. holiness and God requires prerequisites on the greater blessings of God. So just be careful who you listen to and make sure they are biblical. If they don't get their Bible and teach from the Bible, mm -hmm. be suspect of what they're telling you. Mm -hmm. All right? So Jehoshaphat looked for a right kind of prophet. That's what yes. we need to do. Yes. Okay? 
Uh, another thing that Satan does is that he, uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to cover this one, minister, and let you have uh, 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 nine. He disguises himself as an angel of light. Satan doesn't come saying, hey, hello, I'm here. I'm the devil. I came to hurt you. No. He comes looking good, sounding good, knowing all the right things to say. All right? Paul tells the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 and 14. First verse 3. But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, mm. your minds will be led astray. Wow. We go astray in our minds when we don't pay attention to the word. Yes. Your minds will be led astray from the simplicity mm. and the purity yes. of devotion to Christ. He's writing to the Corinthians, a very educated city, a lot of erudite folk in the church. That's where the philosophers were. That was the a center of knowledge in the Grecian world. And they thought the gospel was too simple. Yes, and many Paul people says, today do. Don't get led astray. It's, it's very simple, Paul says. As people do today. Don't let your educated mind get in the way of the simple truth of salvation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And it does require purity of devotion. Just live the simple truth I've taught you, Paul is saying. Here's an educated man saying the gospel is not complicated. Right, right. That's good stuff. Okay, and then in verse, 11, in verse 14 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, a little further down in the chapter, he says, no wonder that you can be led astray. He says, because no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Now, that simply means you've got to have a discerning eye and know the word of God to see the devil coming. Mm -hmm. So, enough said. Minister, what else does Satan do that we need to watch out for? Well... One of the things he does is accuses God's people. God's people. Before God. Does that, in, does that include you and I? It includes you and I. And, All and, of these and, things pertain to us. God's people out well. there watching, the devil's accusing them? Yes. Before God. Yes. Wow. Especially if you are trying to walk on the straight and narrow. Okay. Especially. Okay. I just want to clarify to he, everybody. He wants to disprove you and your devotion to God, simple devotion, and he wants to discredit God. Mm. Wow. He, want to disc he wants to discredit God's power and ability to lead you and be preeminent in your life. Now, now Minister, you're going to read some scripture. Yes, I'm going to read it. Up it. For you. You're going to read a scripture, some scripture, yes. quite a bit about a holy man. Yes. Righteous in all his ways. Uh -huh. serving God, praying for his children. God had caused him to have great wealth and great influence in all of the society, the richest man in the area. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't doing anything wrong. Right. And Satan came accusing him. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know nobody's exempt no matter how right you try to live. Mm -hmm. Satan's trying to find something wrong with you and pointing it out to God. Yes. Minister, thank you for letting me set it up. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're reading from Job, yes. the very popular, uh, well-known person or character in the Bible, but yes. some people don't really read all of the book of Job, No, the whole thing to really see God being unfolded. I think it's, what, 42 chapters? 42 chapters. It is a book in itself. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, Job chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 6 through 12. It reads, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and wow. walking around it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Mm. For there is no one like him on the earth a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away mm. from evil. Yes. Then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear you for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. Mm hmm but put you forth your hand now and touch all that he has, he will surely curse you mm. to your face. Mm. 
Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Mm -hmm. Only do not put forth your hand on him. Mm -hmm. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. And so we know that Job lost everything. Yes. His, his uh, children, his cattle, his wealth, and Satan then, but Job kept serving God. That's my point. Yes. And that leads us to the second time Satan came back when that didn't work, he came back with another accusation. Yes. Well, yes. He but attempted he his riches, his wealth, and his but, but houses. But Job kept yes. serving God. But he kept serving God and he kept worshiping. But Satan didn't stop accusing him. No. So he came back with another accusation when that one didn't work. Yes. Another, another test. Okay, yes. minister. I'm reading from Job chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. Yes. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming about on the earth and walking around it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, wow. a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. Yes, still. <laughs> and he still holds fast yes. his integrity, although you incited me against him to ruin him without cause. Wow. Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yes, all that a man has he will give for his life. Mm -hmm. However, put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. Mm. So the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your power, only spare his life. Wow. So Satan came back and accused him after taking his stuff didn't work. Mm -hmm. Then God allowed Satan to touch Job's body and make him sick and, and, and boils and sores all over. And his wife uh, was against him and his friends came and accused him and Job kept his integrity still. So the temptation didn't work on Job. Yeah. Losing his stuff didn't uh, uh, make him doubt God and turn away from God. Losing his health didn't make him. Losing his friends didn't make him turn on God. Job kept his integrity. He stood the test like Christ did. He stood but the Satan test. But Satan still kept accusing. He kept accusing. Excellent. But God knew Job would pass the test. Well, and he should know we will. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, one more scripture on Satan's activity. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Yes. It says, then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brother, brethren has been thrown down. Mm. He who accuses them before our God day and night. Wow. So there will be a time when Satan's ability, authority mm -hmm. to afflict those that belong to God will end. But right now, he's busy accusing and laying traps. Absolutely. We need to be aware of Satan, but not be afraid of Satan. Right. All right. As long as we trust God, he will protect us from Satan. Right. So, but we, again, this study is about understanding yes. the spirit realm. Right. Reminding you. And the activity of Satan is what we're talking about. These are things that are currently going on. Yes. And we are engaging in the study simply to recognize and know how to position ourselves. Minister, you know what I want to say at this point? Yes. What do you want to say? I really don't like the devil, and I never plan for us to have to talk about him this much anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> We're we talking about that rascal too much tonight, but our objective is to expose him. Absolutely. So I have one more point, and we're going to leave the Exposure devil alone Exposure is while. great. You hear me? We're going to leave him alone. <laughs> Here's the last point. Yes. As the God of this world, God of this age, God of this dispensation, mm -hmm. all applicable terms, he rules over the fallen world. God is still overall in charge. But he's allowing Satan, since Adam gave him the title deed to the earth, to rule the earth for a 
while before God renovates it by fire and creates a new heaven and a new earth. But that's another lesson for another day. Mm -hmm. All right? And we know that he's in charge. John says, so be aware, he rules the world. Don't be shocked at what the capitals of the nations do. Don't be, I mean, in California here, we just heard on the news yesterday, somebody in Northern California went to his workplace with a gun and killed eight or nine people. I think with him, 10 people are dead. Wow. Don't be shocked when uh, people are killing each other in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. 10 children got killed by missiles that went over uh, across one border to another border. I mean, babies that are innocent. Sin in the world is because of Satan running the world. Mm -hmm. Don't be shocked at what dictators do, at massacre of, of people uh, uh, in Africa, in Asia, in different parts of the world. Satan is in charge and he's causing chaos. Mm -hmm. But God is overall in charge and he will bring it to an end, as you said a moment ago. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. The scripture, 1 John 5, 19 says, we know, we know that we are of God and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Mm -hmm. Satan is running this fallen world. The, the earth is the earth. depraved, as I say. It, yes. the, yeah, and he's running it through evil men and his demons are influencing them to do evil deeds. What kind of spirit will possess a man to go and indiscriminately to kill 10 people at his workplace? Mm -hmm. What will possess people in the last few years to go to an elementary school mm -hmm. and gun down a half a dozen or a dozen innocent, innocent preteen children? Mm -hmm. That's demonic uh, activity, either possession or oppression. That is something that is so ungodly. And I remember somebody going to the L.A. morgue and seeing a minister when he saw a lot of young corpses in the L.A. morgue there, I believe it's on Mission Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said while he was there, the devil spoke to him and said, these are my trophies. Mm, wow. He loves killing innocent young people. I mean, that's a minister's story. Uh, he said it's true. But he's running this world. It lies in his power. Mm -hmm. We as believers are in God's hand. And he can't do any more to the church and God's people than God allows. Thank God for his love and his care. I have a summation points, minister, and then you can say anything you'd like to say. Okay. Okay? When we see the influence of Satan and the destruction that he causes, we may be tempted to become too concerned. But let us remember that Satan is ruling the world for a time. But God is still in overall charge and Satan can't do any more than God allows. Adam and Eve plunged the world into sin. And God is allowing sin to run its course as the angels and demons look on. And they're going to witness in the end that righteousness wins. Mm -hmm. Satan and sin were defeated by Christ on the cross at Calvary. I mean, Satan already knows he's defeated. Mm -hmm. And he tries to prevent people from getting the remedy to him through Jesus. Mm -hmm. God is delaying the return of Christ at the end of the age to give time for more people to be saved. The scripture we've covered either earlier in this study or another study mm -hmm. says God is not slack in the King James or slow in the, in the NASB about keeping his promise as some count slowness. But God is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. God wants everybody saved. If you're a believer, don't stop witnessing. Don't stop praying for your children, your brothers, your uncles, your aunts, your family members, your co-workers. Pray for them. Witness to them. Speak the truth in love. Do, this, do a, 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 a Christian evangelism. Mm -hmm. a, 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 do a, a friendship discipleship. Take them to a ball game. Whatever you can to get them to accept the word you have about Jesus Christ. God is giving us time mm -hmm. to get more people saved. Uh, yeah. That ends what I have to say uh, on this. Oh, no, in the meantime, I want to say this. Our duty is to work for the kingdom. It's like kind of what I was just saying. And serve his church. Every believer ought to be in some church supporting financially your time, your talent, your treasure, and serving that church, even if it's just passing out programs or greedy at the door. And we should be doing this as we endeavor to bring more people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, Minister, what do you want to say before I say my last word? 
Well, we really uh, have just touched the surface. We, we really uh, don't have the time in these studies. We've just opened it up to you. We've just introduced it to you, and we're saying that we want to encourage you to do more study on your own. I would like to say to parents wow. to be very careful to get the word of God before your children. Yes. Satan plants seeds yes. early yes. in the babies. They have natural curiosity right. and natural inclinations sometimes to even fantasize and uh, Satan provides what they're looking for. So we have no power against that because it's everywhere. It's in the cartoons, yes, it's it in is. the commercials, it is. It's, it's in magazines, it's in books that they're reading, it's in the educational system, Right. it's in the colleges. Yes. And I could go on and on and on and on. But the, the deceit and the disguises and the deception is all in these places. So you need to know the word of God and have the word of God parents in your heart so that you can equip your children um, not to make them fanatics. You don't want to do that because that will play into Satan's hand too. Yes. You want them to be balanced. But, you know, pay attention. Look at the video games. Watch some of the shows right. with your children and look at the demonic influence. I yeah. mean, something as simple as jewelry, as crystals. I'm not going to get into it, but something as simple as crystals yes. could be a lure for your child that's yes. only five years old. Excellent, Minister. Okay, so I can't get into it deeply, but I hope this is sparking your interest enough that you want to research it for your children if you don't have any, for your neighbor's children, yes. <laughs> or your relative's children. Yes, yes. Okay, he plants seeds early. Minister, you were saying, and we have a limited time, I'm gonna take one minute and say this. Television and movies and videos are very powerful medium. Very powerful. Music. Some of the cartoons have, have wrong overtones. Mm -hmm. And one, there are some shows, that was a show on called Lucifer. Mm -hmm. that made Satan seem lovable. Mm -hmm. And it, was a, it wasn't biblically based, but it's planting your own seed. Thank God it got canceled. Uh, uh, there, there was a show on called Charmed. Mm -hmm. A lot of young girls watched. There was another show on before Charmed, I can't remember the name of it, where a young girl was a witch. And a vampire. A, a, and a, a vampire. <laughs> and, and a lot of these different shows are planting seeds and making these girls on charm, they are beautiful, they have suitors, and they have these powers. Those are not shows you should let your children watch. Screen the cartoons, screen the videos that your children are watching. Television is a strong medium, and Satan is using it. Thank you for raising that. And music is the other. A music is the other. A young man came out with a video with us where he's turning into a snake mm -hmm. and uh, putting blood in a, in a sneaker and all kind of nonsense. And these music award shows are turning into uh, Satan uh, ritual-like things at the Grammys. Pay attention to the Grammy ceremonies and you'll learn what you should be warning your children against. And don't think it's not wrong just because people that your children like are involved in it. We could call names, but we don't want to do that. Yeah. Watch the Grammy ceremonies, watch the songs, watch the shows, and watch what's going on on those stages. And really, it's not godly. Beware of the media. That's where we're in this. Satan uses media. Yeah. All right? Any, any more words, Minister? No, I'm done. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching. Tune in next time. It's going to be very interesting as we look at the activity of angels, both good and evil angels. I know you think you understand angels, but you'll understand it a lot better after the next uh, presentation of the biblical perspective. Thank you. Be blessed. Amen. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.